All right, now that we've all had our fun with tier lists and realized that units are temporary, it's time to look at what truly lasts, equipment, or in this video, Super Trustmaster Rewards. As per usual, the best Super Trustmaster rewards in the game. I'll be ignoring any Super Trustmaster rewards that aren't first place, but keep in mind that the vast majority of Super Trustmaster rewards are excellent anyways. Well, most of them, I guess. In terms of guidelines, I'll be measuring several different things. Damage, physical, magical, hybrid, evoke, limit burst damage, boost to equipment parameters, defense, spirit, and combining that with health for effective defense. Unfortunately, I'll be excluding two very important features, elemental resistances and killer buffs. Why? Because honestly, those are only important when a specific fight calls for it. Be aware that these features are extremely vital to the overall game, so make sure to keep an open mind throughout the video. Let's get things started. Daggers. Rakish Thief Zodan's Ultima weapon still remains the best, and it might even be improved through Chronicle battles in the future. Similarly, Benevolent Beauty Ram's Orichalcum Dirk remains best for magic. Mastermind Zon's Crimson Butterfly still deserves special mention, but you should probably watch the other two videos to find out why. Swords. Thanks to Chronicle Battles and Farming Hell, Crown Prince Noctis Ultima Blade can become one of the best swords in the game, with additional limit burst damage attached. If your unit's dual wielding, War Hero Reagan's Intruder is a great choice. For magic, Neo Vision Terra Sword Plus will take the top spot, with an added bonus from Evoke Damage. If you don't need to boost Evoke Damage, but want to boost Esper Parameters, grab Ferris' Sword. Eldrin Snowseeker is a great choice for hybrid damage dealers. Paladin Caesar's Smith Graven Blade is still very good for magic tanks. Special mention to Seeker of Freedom Bonds to Rondo as it gives a 30% boost to Provoke and Physical Evasion. Great Swords. Rain and Venus Sword Bow of Unbreakable Faith has the best mix of stats, limit burst damage boost, and damage variants. If you don't want a two-handed weapon, you can get Advent Children Cloud's Fusion Sword instead. Katanas. Axtar and Cleome's Master and Apprentice's Great Katana is an excellent two-handed weapon with an additional boost to limit burst damage. Supreme Diva Axtar's Quadra Katana still has a 50% attack buff, though it might not be as difficult to cap a stat nowadays. Awakened Dragon Axtar's Novus Ember is shrunk for dual wielding units. If you want a Magic Katana, take a look at Hess Sage Round's Pluey Saber. Staffs. Malleus Magical Eggs can increase equipment spirit when dual wielding, and Precious Staff can do the same thing while holding a shield. Rods. Dark Fina and So's Serpent Rod of the Twin Sages is best for equipment stats. If you want to boost some limit burst damage, get Mallow's Lazy Rod. Oracle Maiden Lunafreya's Trident of the Oracle can boost your unit's evoke damage, though Lunafreya herself prefers to hold the staff from the Leviathan Chronicle battle. Bows. Neo Vision Furion's bow is the best in offensive capabilities. If you want magic, Draconian Princess Venus Draconian's Princess's Pulse exists for whoever wants it. Axis. Ignatius Ignition Axe received a great buff in attack, though there's probably only one unit who still wants it. Hammers. Still only two hammers. Spears. Berserker's Emotional Lance is a two-handed spear that boosts jump damage. If you don't want a two-handed spear, Kimari's Spirit Lance also boosts jump damage by a smaller amount. Instruments. Chin's Fifth Nirvana, if anyone still has that. Wits. Yego's Fast Slash is the best for physical damage, but there's only one person who wants that. Magic has a bit more variety. Umbro Dragon Dark Venus Dark Empress Birch is great if your unit's dual wielding. If they're single wielding, I'd recommend they grab a rod instead. But if you're so insistent, then White Lily Dark Venus True Empress Birch exists. Throwing Weapons Neo Vision Lock Sniper is a strangely named throwing weapon. In terms of magic, go for a Baros Demonic Scrub. If you want spirit, you can check out Dashing Gambler Setzer's Death Terret. Guns Agent Olive's Black Sparky is the best for offensive power. If you don't want a two-handed weapon, you can get the second unit's Tiny B for general attack, or Rico Rodriguez's SW9 Assault Rifle if you want to raise your unit's equipment attack stat. If you want a magic gun, you can get the one that belongs to that one unit. Mesis we recently got a second Super Trustmaster reward mace, Zizat's Morning Star, which is great for boosting spirit. The other one, Levison's Bag of Toys, doesn't really have any contenders, so first place by default. Fists. Neo Vision Madame Adele's Scarlet Glove is the best for attack and limit burst damage. If you want to raise equipment attack, you can use Carton's Wild Fang Heirloom for dual wielding units. Solitary Patron Snow's Crystallized Claw has an incredible amount of defense and spirit. Light shields are often overshadowed by heavy shields, but if you really want one, Ramses' Escutcheon is an excellent pick with its stats and elemental resistances. Knightly Paragon Lawrence's Commando Captain Shield lacks the HP and elemental resistances, but makes up for it with some Provoke and Evasion. Sylvie's Spring Basket is a bit more skilled, but nevertheless useful. Heavy Shields Sacred Shield Charlotte's Honor of Grand Shout is the best for magic tanks. For physical tanks, Seaguard's Attractive Shield provides a nice HP boost alongside great defense. 
Cats. Carlet's Fred Hellbore is the best general attack and hybrid damage dealers. Black Mage Ark's Hat has the highest magic stat. Here Summoner Ridius Headband is one of the better Super Trustmaster rewards for evoke damage bonuses. Shoreline Fina and Daisy's Midsummer Boater is incredible for magic tanks with its stats, HP boost, and a guts buff. Hounds, there's one. It's Gogamesh's. Congrats, man. Close. Vermilion Blade Arden and Cabal Blade Noctis are neck and neck with their outfits, so the winner really depends on the battle at hand. If you're going for magic, there's Dancing Heart Pinello's Rabbit Nasher's Dancer's Clothing. But if your unit's single wielding, then Remake Arif's Clothes would be the best pick. It's also best for Spirit as well. Neo Vision Lasso's purple and black battle attire can be used for mixed damage dealers. Renora's Conductor Uniform is great for physical tanks, but since Grand Helm Plus Plus exists, it's going to be overshadowed by other equipment. Light Armor Felix's Toy Soldier Uniform provides the greatest amount of attack and magic, though Stern Leonis' Line Armor is better for Limit Burst damage dealers. Oberic Surcoat is great for physical tanks, though you'd often prefer heavy armor. A pity they're unlimited. Heavy Armor New Vision Gavern's armor is best for physical tanks. Wilhelm's Imperial armor is best for magical tanks. Black Mage Gobez's armor is the best for magic. Veritas of the Flames Flame Lord armor is the best in attack, though that's not really saying much. Robes Wizard of Shantado's Minister's Coat is easily the best in magic. If you want spirit, then grab Eunice's clothes or Elephant's dress. Accessories There are a lot of categories here, but if I complain about that, we won't get anywhere. AI Katie's upgrade package is a very useful but fairly obscure accessory that very few players know about. Lively Steward Shinger's Steward Pumps are an excellent boost for general offense. If you use a dual wielding unit, it's probably better to pick up Zenaida's Warlord Lig Guards. Even if they aren't dual wielding, it still provides an incredible amount of attack. For magic, So's Heliolite takes top spot in pure magnitude. If your unit's dual wielding, then don't pass over Malfazi's Ravenheart. It's great for a lot of other offensive units, especially hybrid damage dealers. Regular Aerith's Choker provides the greatest amount of spirit, though a magical tank might prefer Emperor Shara's ring thanks to its bonus HP boost. Special mention to Lily Set's Moonshade Earrings and Rena Shortcake for great stats and resistance to all status ailments. Materias. Quite a few ways to organize these, but let's take it one at a time. For attack, Sora from Kingdom Heart 3's Guardian of Light absolutely surpasses everyone with an 80% attack boost and a 75% boost to limit burst damage. If you want to think about equipment attack, Riku from Kingdom Heart 3's Guardian of Light gives the same attack boost alongside additional modifiers if your unit's holding a weapon. Too bad they're gone now. If you like to use true double hand, Remake Cloud's Master of Fate is absolutely skewed for just that. If you want to boost jump damage, get Roberta's Dragoon's Wisdom. For magic, Mistina's Gifted Sorceress's Knowledge takes top spot. Selfie's Love for Turbia is great if you want to boost your dual wielding equipment magic, though its final bonus magic boost is only viable for, well, Selfie. Starlight Elena's Azure Radiance can be extremely helpful if you're just holding a single weapon, which can also be used for hybrid damage dealers, though it won't give any flat stats. If you want to mix, Sarah's Enchanting Archer is great for single wielding units, even if they're not holding a bow. Archmage Kefka's Corrupted Mage matches her stats, but lacks the bow boost. For hybrid damage, Elena's Warrior of the Crystal has the general stats for single wielding units, while Blue Gogamesh's Wings that transcend time is great while dual wielding. Want to boost evoke damage? then I recommend getting you Naleska's Originator of the Final Summoning and Lunafreya's Duty to the World. Moving on to other stats. Yoshikiri's Spirit of the Shinobi is the best way to quickly boost your unit's spirit. For physical tanks, well, there are so many good choices, and with limits on parameter boost, it's probably best to mix and match HP and defense to your heart's content. Warrior of Dawn Gallop's Warrior from Another World, Gladiolus's Shield of the Chosen King, and Zargabas's Judge's Oath are excellent choices. Magic tanks follow a similar predicament, but you can't go wrong with Sweet Lucas Valentine Recipe, Ask Unquestionable Loyalty, or Zargabas Judge's Oath. Again, special mention to Kaido Sea Dragon, as it grants a 30% boost to evasion. And those were all the best Super Trustmaster rewards in the game. Now you might remember that there was quite a bit of overlap from previous videos. As you can tell, Super Trustmaster rewards tend to grant an incredible amount of mileage, even long after the unit itself has already fallen out of favor. To decide which Super Trustmaster reward you'd want to get, take a look at the one row you want to prioritize, and start giving them one piece of equipment at a time. And if you don't have every unit featured in this video, then I guess you'll just have to look elsewhere. Super Trustmaster rewards aren't the most necessary feature in Final Fantasy Brave XVS, as there are many other places to get incredible equipment. Having said that, Super Trustmaster rewards are definitely nice to have, whether it's for gameplay, Neo Visions, or just a rubbing in other people's faces. Thanks for watching, and if you liked this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Tell me which Super Trustmaster rewards you have, and which Super Trustmaster rewards you'd like to get. 